Welcome to our last session of the Zero Waste Ambassador at Home program. This workshop is part of Ciclomanias Educational Programs and it is founded by the Take Action Grant. For today's session, we're going to cover the following topics. Get to know your waste. What is an ecological footprint? What is sustainable shopping? What is greenwashing? The importance of buying local? And what is and how to use Calgary dollars? It is very important to know our waste generation behaviors. By understanding these behaviors, we can take action and change our bad habits and find areas where we can improve. A waste audit helps you to understand the type of waste and amount of waste you generate in a given period of time. It is very simple to conduct a waste audit at home. You just need to follow the following steps. Everyone in your household must take part in the audit. They need to know its importance and they have to be committed to collecting all their waste. Then you need to establish a period of time that your audit will cover. You will need to collect all the waste during this period of time. It can be one day or one week. Be aware that the longer the time, the more information you will get. You have to behave as you normally do. It is important to collect all your waste, including the waste you generate when you are out of the house. You can bring a large sandwich bag to collect your trash while you are at work or at school. When the agreed time has passed, you must sort your waste into the following categories. Organics, paper, cardboard, glass, metal, rigid plastic, soft plastic, batteries, e-waste, appliances, and non-recyclable. These categories might change depending on what your local waste collection company assets for recycling. Once you have sorted your waste into different categories, tally your results. If you have a scale at home, you can weigh the waste of each group. This will give you a more accurate result. This is an example of a waste audit. As you can see, waste was collected and sorted into different categories. After recording your results, you can calculate your diversion rate with the following formula. The amount of recyclable waste plus your compost waste times 100 divided by the total waste. The City of Calgary has set a specific diversion targets for each sector. For a single family, 70% is the expected diversion rate. If you use the scale, you can use the weight to calculate your diversion rate. A waste audit can help us determine possible behavior changes. We can identify what we can reduce and which items we can reuse. For instance, you may notice that you are consuming too many bottles of water. You can change this behavior by using a refillable bottle. Or if you are consuming too many vegetables or fruit wrapped with plastic, you may consider buying ungrabbed produce, which is more environmentally friendly, or even better, you can harvest your own produce. By knowing our waste, we know what we can change. Everything we consume uses resources and produces waste, and nature must have the ability to meet this demand. The ecological footprint measures the demand and supply of nature. The size of a person's ecological footprint will depend on many factors. Do you grow your own food? Do you walk or drive? Do you use renewable or non renewable energy sources? Everyone has an ecological footprint. The ecological footprint can measure the impact a person has on nature up to the impact of an entire country. We all need the air resources to survive, but we must make sure we don't take more resources than the earth can provide or regenerate. The ecological footprint tells us the amount of water and land required to produce what we consume and to absorb the waste we generate. Biocapacity is the biological productive area available to provide the resources we use and to absorb the waste we generate. By knowing this, we measure the pressure that our lifestyles exert on the planet. For example, my ecological footprint is 1.8 global hectares. As you can see from the map, Canada's environmental footprint per capita is more than 6.7 global hectares. 
A more accurate number for Canada's per capita footprint provided by the Global Footprint Network is 9.2 global hectares. This means that to produce what we consume in Canada every year, we need 9.2 global hectares per person, which is one of the largest ecological footprint in the world. The biocapacity of Canada is 26.8 global hectares per person. If we do the math, the difference is 17.6 global hectares. That means that Canada is a creditor country. Does this mean that Canada can consume more? We have another example. Mexico has an ecological footprint of 2.6 global hectares per person and its biocapacity is 1.1 global hectares per person. This means that they have a deficit of 1.5 global hectares. Today, the majority of countries in the world are running ecological deficits, using more natural resources than ecosystems within their borders can regenerate. Others depend heavily on resources from elsewhere, which are under increasing pressure. In some areas of the world, the implications of ecological deficits can be devastating, leading to resources loss and ecosystem collapse. You can calculate your ecological footprint at footprintcalculator.org. One way to reduce our ecological footprint is to reduce our overconsumption. To do so, we can follow the hierarchy of needs. The hierarchy looks at buying at the last level after all other areas have been tried. There are many options that we can try before buying something. By following the hierarchy, we not only help the environment, but we also help our economy. Make good use of what you have and try to extend that useful life or your things as much as possible. If you need something that you don't have, try to borrow it. Do you know someone who might have the item you are looking for and might be willing to swap with something you have? There are Facebook groups where you can trade your goods. In thrift store, you can find good quality items. This is a form of buying, but you are giving a second life to the product. Think about the things you can make. For instance, you can make personal care products or you can cook muffins instead of buying the ones that are packaged in plastic containers. And after you have exhausted all your options, you can buy. We will give you tips on how to buy sustainably. Sustainable shopping is to consume goods in accordance with our real needs, opting for options that promote environmental conservation and social equality. It encourages the efficient use of resources, avoid pollution, and improves people's quality of life. We must change our consumption habits and adjust them to our needs and the needs and limitations of the planet. What are the reasons to promote sustainable shopping? It considers the environmental impact of the product we buy, assessing the process of production, transportation, distribution, consumption, and waste generated by the product. Also, it takes into account the ecological footprint produced by certain lifestyles and consumerism. And it considers companies and services that respect the environment and human rights. What is greenwashing? Greenwashing makes people believe that a company is doing more to protect the environment than it actually is. Greenwashing is not only misleading consumer, but also doesn't help promote sustainable initiatives. Companies that use greenwashing are not necessarily concerned about environmental problems, but rather are interested in increasing their profits. This is problematic because it confuses the consumers. People looking to reduce their impacts will buy these products instead of supporting legitimately eco-friendly companies. That is why, we must be careful to not be confused by greenwashing. Before I go through a few greenwashing examples, I would like you to identify if these products are really green. What may you think they are green? Try to introduce a new eco-friendly product. Why is this product eco-friendly? The product description claims that it is made with 100% renewable energy, but Thai continues to make it's non-eco-friendly products which are made with non-renewable energy. 
it is important to consider if the whole brand is changing or if it is just one product. Also, the soap is in a plastic bottle. This is not eco-friendly. Plastic is made with oil and it can be recycled for limited times as it loses quality every time it is recycled. In the end, it will end up in the landfill. You need to consider the entire life cycle of the product and it is always better to avoid plastics. I want you to analyze this product too. Is it really green? What made you think is green? This product is using green colors to show that it is environmentally friendly. In the product's description, we can see that it is made from 55% plant materials. The other 45 is most likely made with plastic materials. This product needs to be discarded in the trash. Also, the product is packaged in plastic that cannot be recycled. How to spot greenwashing? Look for imagery and words that look and sound eco-friendly without any claims. Or the claims are implied or back and they lack evidence to back up them. Always read the product information. Be aware of the colors used in the product. Not all the green, blue, and earthy color products are sustainable. Look for proof of green practices. Read the products and company's description and check that their labels are certified with a trusted eco label. Products that are actually healthier and more sustainable have specific certifications. Learn to recognize the most common and accepted in Canada. You can find more information at this link. Before deciding which product to buy, do some research. You may want to know what makes this an eco-friendly product. Is the company known to be a wasteful company? Are all the products like this or it is just one product? As big companies usually do not change the entire weight of production, they most likely just create a special line. Let's see another example. What is the difference between degradable, biodegradable and compostable? Degradable. Everything is degradable. You just need to give it enough time. But how things degrade can be very harmful to the environment. For example, plastic can take hundreds of years to degrade. With time, they break down into smaller pieces of plastics and eventually they become microplastics. And as we mentioned in our previous session, these are harmful to the animals that can ingest them and for us when they get into the food chain. Biodegradable plastic can lead people to believe that they can break down naturally over time, in the same way that an organic product will. For this type of plastic to degrade, it needs to be exposed to temperatures around 50 degrees Celsius and sunlight. So this plastic will not degrade if it enters to water sources or when it is buried in the landfill. Perhaps a better label for this product will be biodegradable but only under certain street conditions. Compostable. Compostable plastics are plant-based plastic that do not produce any toxic matter. Something is compostable if it is capable of disintegrating into all natural elements in a compost environment. But compostable plastics only degrade in certain conditions too. You need an industrial composting process to be able to compost compostable bags. It is better not to use compostable bags for your compostable waste. It is better to use a paper liner. Do not put the compost bag into your home compost. It is important that we learn to make the right choices when we are buying something. For example, we can buy body soap in a bottle. Even though plastic is recyclable, it has a limited time to be recycled because every time it is recycled, it loses quality. In the end, the plastic will end up in the landfill. Recycling plastic is energy intensive. Most of the time it is cheaper to produce new plastic than to recycle it. And plastic is sourced from non-renewable fossil fuels. On the other hand, you can choose to buy body soap packaging cardboard. Cardboard has a high recycling rate. Recycled carbon can cut down on the environmental footprint but it still uses water and energy to be produced. 
or you can choose body soap that it is made with natural ingredients and does not have any package. This packaging analysis can be applied to many products, for example, eggs. You can buy eggs in a plastic container or you can buy eggs in a carton container. Or you can even reuse your carton container when you buy eggs in a farmer's market. Our last example is tea. You can buy tea that comes in a box wrapped with plastic and each tea bag is packaged individually. Also, it is important to consider that many teas use the synthetic bags that cannot be composted and they have the label stapled. It is important to choose tea in bags that can be composted or it is better to buy loose tea. The consumption of local products and services is beneficial for our local economy and generates employment for our neighbors. Local consumption reduces the emissions of polluting gases into the atmosphere because long distance transport is not required. In Calgary, we have many farmers markets that are Alberta approved farmers markets through the Ministry of Alberta Agriculture and Forestry. All Alberta approved farmer markets must meet minimum guidelines established by the Ministry. The Sonicare logo identifies Alberta approved farmer markets. This means consumers can trust that the majority of the goods purchased will help support the local economy and act as a driver for community development in your neighborhood. One example is the Hill Horse Sunnyside Farmers Market. Their schedule for the summer is Wednesday, 3 to 7 p.m., starting May 26. Calgary Dollars is a local currency in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The currency is used in Calgary with the purpose of empowering local businesses and strengthening community economic development and to build local resiliency. Cyclomanias has been using Calgary Dollars for more than 10 years, supporting the local economy through the Calgary Dollars online marketplace, as well as participating in different shows, events, and farmers markets. For instance, the Zero Waste Ambassador Home Program was founded with Calgary Dollars by the Take Action Grant. The Take Action Grant is a program of the Arisha Center which engages with local communities demonstrate the role of and encourage the use of Calgary dollars while promoting local organization and businesses. To summarize our session, these are some of the takeaways. Reduce your consumption. Remember that the most environmentally friendly product is the one that you didn't buy. Support the local economy. Try to minimize your consumption of imported products. Buy seasonal products. These are fresher, cheaper and more sustainable. Do not forget to bring your reusable bags. Choose fresh produce in order to save the energy used when processing them. Learn to analyze the packaging of the products, if it is recyclable, compostable, or if it goes to the landfill, so you can make the right decisions. Buy bulk and do not forget to bring containers with you to avoid packaging. Do not fall into the greenwashing trap. Check the certifications accepted in Canada. Buy second hand if you can. This is our contact information. If you have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching.